Today, we're going to talk about back button focus, why to use it for landscape photography, and how to configure it for a Nikon Z series mirrorless camera. So most cameras come from the camera manufacturer with the shutter release button tied to two functions. One being you press the shutter release button and the shutter opens and you capture your image. The other being you half press the shutter and your autofocus system is engaged and you focus in on whatever point you had in there. Now for a new camera user, it can be very convenient to have those two tied together linked to the shutter button. Obviously you want things to be in focus while you press the shutter button, so tie it together, you're already there, half press, focus, finish pressing, get the image, it's probably gonna be in focus because autofocus systems these days are pretty good. However, for more experienced landscape photographers or those looking to improve their consistency in focus, separating, decoupling those two functions from the shutter release button can have its advantages and that's what we're gonna look at today. So one of the primary advantages of decoupling the autofocus mechanism from your shutter release button is simply you've got one button for shutter release and one button enable your autofocus. And that just sort of simplifies things and helps make sure that you don't get soft focus because your camera decided to try to autofocus again on something you already thought you had in focus. That can be especially important in like a low light scene, you know, an early morning scene where your camera's already struggling a little bit to get that focus. Um, you know, it's doing, you know how it is when you start it, you try to autofocus and it gets a little bit of that hunting before it settles in on it. Well, if it's tied to your shutter button, every time you go and half press or if you pause too long as you go click the shutter, it could force the camera to try to refocus. It starts to do that shift, you click the shutter and now you've got a fuzzy out of focus shot. If you have it decoupled, you can get all set up you can use the back button focus, get the scene in focus, it locks in. Now, even if you go press the shutter button 30 seconds later, a minute later, it's not gonna re-engage the autofocus mechanism. It is still gonna be focused in on what you wanted it to the first time. So it reduces that chance of you catching your camera or accidentally getting the camera, going into the autofocus mode, doing a shift, shifting your focus, and leading to a blurry image from there. So that decoupling, that's one of the primary advantages, a little bit more consistent focus. The autofocus mechanisms on these cameras are amazing once they're locked in. So they can really help in that type of situation. So another time this can be important is when timing of your shutter release is important. Say you're at a seascape and you've got crashing waves and you're trying to time that perfect shot where the waves are coming in, hitting the rock. If you can separate your focusing function from your shutter release function, you can get it things all lined up, get your focus in, back button focus, and you're good. You can wait, you see the wave coming in, you press your shutter, boom, it's fast, it's like that. Otherwise, if it's coupled in and you press the shutter, your camera could suddenly decide it wants to autofocus because a little bit of water's here or there. And now you miss that perfect moment because your camera went into autofocus mode as you're getting the set to press the shutter release button and cause a timing problem. So back button focus can be a big help with that as well. And another case where it can be handy to decouple those functions is if you're bracketing manually where you're getting a, a well-exposed image, one that's overexposed, you can bring those shadows up, make sure you get the shadow detail, and one that's underexposed, so you get that highlight detail. Being able to have full, complete control of your autofocus is important. You're able to get in there, use your back button focus, get the focus. You can click the shutter button. It's not going to autofocus again because it's only clicking the shutter. You can make your exposure adjustments to get the bracket you want. Press the shutter button again. You don't have to worry about that autofocus re-engaging and making a slightly different decision, giving just a slight bit of softness to your images. So in the end, it can lead you to more crisp, more in-focus images more reliably. Okay, so one other advantage of using back button focus is it can make moving between manual focus and autofocus very easy without needing to switch a button, touch the camera lens to enable or disable manual focus. So for example, what I can do is I can line up my shot, use my back button focus to get an autofocus, and if I want to make a small manual focus tweak, I can manually, while holding down the back button focus ring button, if I move the manual focus ring, I can make a small tweak, and if I have focus peaking on, I get all the advantage of focus peaking so I can see what I have in focus without having to change the automatic, the autofocus to the manual button. Makes it pretty handy. If you want to make those subtle tweaks, it's just a little bit less finagling with the camera and can be sort of a cool side benefit of back button focus. So on an icon mirrorless system where I'll typically move the autofocus mechanism to is to this AF on button on the back of the camera, right up there. And then so I'll go in my camera settings, change the configuration so that that's what autofocus is my camera. And now when I take my image, I get it all lined up, get it composed, get my focus point where I want it, 
press the AF on button, my autofocus will engage and get things in focus. I can let go of that button and now my camera will remain focused where my focus point had been. And I can start using just the shutter button to just open the shutter to capture my image. And if I pause between things because I'm waiting for the light to change, I don't have to worry about my autofocus having shifted. Okay, so we've come out here into a local metro park to do some woodlands photography. Again, that is a thing I'm looking to improve this year is my woodlands. So part of doing that is getting out here, looking at compositions. So if the fog ever rolls in, I'll be ready to know sort of where I want to head right off the bat so that I can hunt and look there. So anyways, today's shot, oh, I found this tree that is sort of in an area with not a lot of underbrush, which is good. Sometimes difficult to do here in Ohio. And I like its interesting textures on the bark. It looks a little different than the other trees. And there's this little bit of path where the water runs through. We actually right now have several deer uh, hanging out over here. I got three deer. They've been hanging out for the past like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I actually switched over to my 24 to 200 to get some shots of them. So we'll see if those come out. Don't really consider myself a wildlife photographer, but if the deer are going to stay in that close to you, you might as well take advantage of it and take some shots. Anyways, this is what we're going to use for my back button focus. We'll sort of walk through it. And then finally, I'll walk through how to make the, how to enable back button focus on a Nikon mirrorless camera. Okay, so I'm all set up here. I got the tripod up, got the camera I was shooting with the Z7 II today. Got the tree that I want a little bit off to the right. Sort of shooting high, a little bit of downward tilt to my camera. Uh, putting the tree over there, a little bit of a path that leads off through that way. Here's how we're going to do this is I've decoupled my autofocus from my shutter release. So I'm using back button focus, which is tied to the AF on button right here. What I do is I put my focus point where I want it. I want the textures out of this tree. So I have my focus point set right here at the base of the tree. I'm almost all the way out. I'm probably about 65 millimeters out. What I do is I press the back button. I press my AF on button and my autofocus engages and that's it. I can hold it down, make sure I got it where I want it. I like it. Now I can come back up to my shutter. I'm actually going to enable shutter delay here real quick. The shutter delay is just to avoid camera shake after I press the shutter. So I've got shutter or exposure delay on there, two seconds right now. Now, one of the cool things is I just went, made a camera setting change, but my autofocus is already set and it's decoupled from my shutter release. So when I press my shutter, my autofocus is going to be where I want it. Got everything lined up, press the shutter, two second delay, takes the image. Now we do want to check our focus. The autofocus systems are pretty good. Uh, in a local metro park, it's not huge. Worst case is I get home, I got a couple blurry shots. I'm like 15 minutes away from here. But if you're traveling somewhere pretty far, it's not a bad idea again to have it. Just double check that focus. Most of the time it's going to be fine, but much better to find out why you're out in the field and can correct it than when you get home and realize you're hundreds of miles away from where you wanted to be. So I uh, use my playback button, zoom in. On, I'm really wanting to focus on the tree. I got great, nice, sharp focus and we're looking good. I'm just gonna wander here a little bit. Just, I think this is the tree that I, I wanna play with. So I am going to just wander around a little bit. There may be a better composition than what I've got. This is sort of the first one I came upon. So let's, uh, let's just wander around, take the camera. I'll move the tripod with me as I go, sort of line things up. And like I said, I do think this is the interesting tree that I'm gonna play with this morning. And we'll go from there. I looked around a little bit. I, this is a very subtle move. I moved really forward and to the left, probably about 15, 20 feet. Just to see how this composition looks, what I sort of like about it is I've got the tree still off to my right. I think the path is a little more clear. So we're gonna take a couple shots of this and see how it goes. So we'll bring you in close as I work with back button focus to take this shot. So we got the tree lined up over there. I bring my focus point. I can use either, I can touch the screen or I can use my dial, my thumb button to set it. What I am focusing on is the texture of the tree. That's what I really want to be super sharp and in focus. Okay, so I got my scene lined up here. Like I said, I'm just a little bit off this direction. I'm sitting at ISO 100, uh, aperture F7.1 with the histogram right about where I want it. Towards the right, not hitting, not blowing my highlights. I'm at 1, 1 1.6. We're gonna line up my focus point, which is right down here at the bottom of the, the tree. We're going to press the AF on to get my autofocus on, release, press my shutter. We got a two second exposure delay. Take a look. Again, pretty sure it's gonna be in focus, but I'm here. Let's just zoom in, make sure it's all good. Okay, I wandered around just a little bit more beyond what I had earlier. I'm gonna get one more shot of this tree and I sort of am on the, one, the opposite side of it and I'm shooting back this direction. And what I sort of see in this particular frame 
is I've got the big tree I like up front, but I got some of the smaller trees sort of fading away. So my first shots were with the big tree and a path going along nearby. This one, I'm sort of trying to capture more of the woods feel with just the big tree being prominent in front of the frame and the smaller trees off in the back. A little bit of the trail winds behind this tree. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how this one looks out. So let's uh, jump behind the camera here, go quickly through. Uh, what this shot looks like. And then, uh, like I said, we'll dive into how to configure back button focus on a Nikon mirror. Okay, so we've got this shot lined up here. Um, the settings are pretty close there. I got ISO 100 because the clouds have come out. It's getting pretty dark back here. But this is the framing I was talking about. I got the tree right here in the center and I got the smaller tree sort of falling away from it. Uh, slightly different composition than before. We'll see which I like best. So yeah, so we dive in here. I got ISO 100, aperture F11 because I'm trying to get a big depth of field because now I've got more trees of interest in the frame. And shutter speed with the histogram not bumping up on the right is 1.6 seconds and I got my focus point sitting right here on the base of the tree so I've got it there press my AF on button which now auto focuses my camera my shutter button is decoupled from that I press the shutter button get the picture and let's zoom in check the sharpness yep nice and crisp everything looks good there only thing I'm going to tweak here is I've sort of got this tree dead center um, I'm just going to play with just putting it off center one way or the other and just see what happens and then we'll wrap it up So there are two things we're going to do to enable back button focus on a Nikon mirrorless camera. The first is to verify that our AF on button is configured to be an AF on button. And then we're going to remove the autofocus piece off of the shutter button, which will leave it on the AF on button, and then we'll be all set. So first thing we want to do is we want to check controls, which is underneath your menu. So hit menu on your camera, go down to custom setting menu, go over and go down to F, the controls. And you want to go down to F2, the custom controls. And we want to go down and there's the AF on button. By default, it's set to AF on. So normally this is okay. This is just a check to make sure it is there. So if it isn't there, set this to your AF on button. You would just hit enter, scroll down to what it, you choose AF on, hit okay, and you're good. So then to go and remove the autofocus off of your shutter button, you want to go back to the custom setting menu to the autofocus option and then go down to AF activation. It's A6 here. That can vary a little bit depending on which firmware you're on or anything like that. Sometimes those numbers will change, but AF activation is what you're looking for. Go into AF activation. By default, autofocus is enabled on the shutter and the AF on button. We're gonna switch it to AF on only. Hit okay. It'll show now off in the menu. And now our AF on, our autofocus is only on the AF on button and no longer on the shutter. So, and that's it. That's all you have to do, enable back button focus. Um, so that's a little bit about back button focus and how it can help your landscape photography. Obviously, we're, a lot of us are used to just, you know, half shutter press, rest of the race shutter press, get your shutter release working. But I think there's some advantages to decoupling it from the shutter release button that you'll find help your landscape photography, help get more in focus shots, less that are like, why is this a little fuzzy? So I highly recommend giving it a try if you haven't already. Go in and decouple that shutter button, get your back button focus set up, and just try it for two weeks. Make a commitment, try it for two weeks, get out there and practice. I don't think it'll take you two weeks to get used to it. It really only takes a time or two out, I think, to get used to it and start playing with it and see if the advantages are useful for you. If you don't like it, you can always switch back. Not everybody likes back button focus. I think it's useful. Give it a whirl. Um, I covered how to enable on your Nikon mirrorless camera. For other camera brands, just go to YouTube, look for back button focus, camera brand name, camera model. And I guarantee you there'll be some video out there on how to enable on your camera. Hop out there, give it a whirl, and see if it works for you. And always let me know in the comments if you're using back button focus already or if you go out and play with it. How does it work for you? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Which one's your preferred method of autofocus? And if you like today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see landscape photography content from me in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the tips, tricks, gear reviews, behind the scenes, or anything like that moving forward. And thank you for watching. Yeah.